most of the time you will find that we get in trouble because of this weakness we have built in in ourselves as a human being and that weakness is of ajal hastiness jaldi karna kaam mein jaldi rushing for things and many time i will say 90% of the time we get in trouble in our personal life in our ibadat in our social life in our business life because of this weakness the ayat of quran which i read in front of you in which allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned this is one of the weakness of the human being allah subhanahu wa taala in quran has mentioned many weaknesses that we have built in among those haste is one daif weak that we are weak by nature that is another weakness forgetful bhool jana this is another weakness we have as a human being there is a hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which he says that if allah grants somebody calmness and he carries himself in a beautiful way that he dresses beautiful he smells beautiful when he talks he talks in a very nice polite way he uses the best possible words to express himself so he conducts his affairs in a very gentle and positive way the hadith says nabuwa prophethood has 20 portions and if allah grants somebody that quality he gets one out of that 20 which are the quality of any nabi and prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala what a blessing that if somebody has this calmness that he takes his time to do his to make his decisions to do his to do his job that allah subhanahu wa taala has granted him with great bounty you know some people call it reaction versus response some people call is rage gussa ajila if you analyze most of our family issues including separation talaq is because of this weakness that we rush the reason i chose this khutbah because in today's time and age really this problem is becoming more you know prominent we see in our community if we see in our ibadat because of this ajila because of this hastiness because of this rush we fail to fulfill the basic requirements of our ibadat when we say allahu akbar i want to rush through my salah because i don't have time i got so many things to take care the requirement from me is, from me is as it is said in one of the hadith prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that when you say allahu akbar and you recite quran when you go in ruku you should let your body relax and when you find yourself in calm then you say sami allahu liman hamida and then you let your body relax and when you find yourself calm then you will say allahu akbar and you go in ruku so because of this hastiness not only our family life is getting affected that we say things and then we regret rest of our life that i wish i should have not said that but time already gone same thing we have attitude about our risk that we are hasty that i want to make sure that i earn whatever i could today i don't want to wait for tomorrow and that's why we don't even differentiate between khabis and tayyab what is allowed and what is not allowed by allah subhanahu wa taala because our mindset is about numbers that i want to make sure that my numbers go higher and higher i don't care if it's khabis unlawful or tayyab which is lawful 
by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, today inshallah I'm going to share with you a few examples. You know in Quran when we read, there are certain stories of Quran which basically also highlight this weakness of human being. When Hazrat Musa salam was called on mountain of Thor, when he went on mountain of Thor, he went before his permitted time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asking him, why you came early, before your time? And he said, Ya Allah, I wanted to meet you. I wanted to spend time in your company. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually did not like that. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam, because of your hastiness, that you left your nation before the allowed time, Samri was able to get hold of your nation and he has caused deception. He has taken them away from your religion because of your hastiness. Same way when Musa salam was spending time with Hazrat Fidr, the famous story in Surah Kahf, what was the dialogue between Hazrat Fidr and Hazrat Musa? Hazrat Khidr was saying that Musa, you will not have patience. When you will experience incidents in my Sohba, I will see that you will not have patience. Prophet Muhammad said that if my brother Musa had little bit more patience, we may have learned more jewels, perils, from the life of Hazrat Khidr alayhi salam. Because he did not have patience, he was hasty to know the reasons why Hazrat Khidr is doing what he is doing. So he lost that soba and connection. So the point from here I want to highlight, brother, everything has its time and place. Even meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has its time and place. So whatever is required right now, has preference that is mandatory for you and me to so sometime that we have to make sure what is mandatory right now if it's a salah time then salah is mandatory even I am not allowed to read Quran I'm doing a good thing reading Quran no but if salah time is due then going for salah is a preference even though you want to just spend few many hour, few more hours with Quran no you better go and do what is the need of the time, fulfill that responsibility and then you can do the next job. The famous story of Hazrat Yusuf salam. When the king saw the dream and he wanted somebody to do the interpretation of that dream and the man, messenger comes to Yusuf salam, that king is calling you for the interpretation of the dream. Do you all remember what was the response of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam? Hazrat Yusuf said, no, I'm not going to leave this prison until and unless my name is cleared. So he showed patience. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that I am amazed. I am amazed with the patience of Yusuf alayhi salam. If I was in his place, and messenger would have come to me that you are getting released from the jail, I may have rushed to get out of the jail. But I am amazed from the patience of Yusuf salam because Yusuf salam said that I am the Nabi of Allah. I do not want to get out of the jail with this blame on me that I have done something wrong. I want first my name should be cleared then I will get out of the jail. My brothers and my sisters, look at this beauty of Hazrat Yusuf salam's patience that he wanted to get it cleared. You know, there was a man, let me share with you a couple of stories in Russia by the name Jeff Garjif. Jeff Garjif, he, he became famous because there are many books by his name. But the point of his life that I heard in one of the lectures, which I want to share with you, when he was nine year old, 
His father was on death bed and he called Jeff Garjif and he says to him that my son I don't have anything in no inheritance I have that I can pass on to you but I have one nasiha one advice for you and that nasiha is that if somebody comes to you and he says something or he's asking something which you do not like which makes you angry don't answer that person right away rather tell him that i have heard your question i have heard your perspective and point of view i am going to answer you tomorrow give yourself time to think because at that moment if you will answer your answer most probability is will be wrong if you are in anger you know one time somebody came to jeff and he was angry froth was coming from his mouth so jeff tells him you know brother in last 2 3 minutes whatever you said froth was coming your blood pressure was going high high i can see that your face was red i can understand only one thing whatever you were saying was is very important to you and you know i have understood part of it but i need some time to understand exactly what you are saying so let's talk tomorrow the man who was angry on him he came the same evening to him before even tomorrow morning and says you know whatever i was telling you most of it was wrong he said still you know i understand the 70 part of percent of the thing you said were wrong but still we will talk tomorrow ceo of google sundar pichai sundar pichai you know one of the story i heard about him and it, this really this story gives us such a good description of reaction and response reaction is hastiness reaction is ajal reaction is rushing for things you know he in one of the story he says that i was sitting in a restaurant and i saw restaurant was full of customers one flying cockroach entered in the restaurant and i saw one woman on which that cockroach sat down she was jumping on the table screaming and crying and then cockroach flies and lands on the shirt of another woman and now she is screaming and crying and in all this pachai says sundar that i was watching this whole scene because i learned a great lesson from this story the cockroach flies from the second woman's shoulder and it lands on the shoulder of a waiter now this waiter cockroach is on his shoulder he is very calm he is not moving and he takes out you know one napkin from his pocket and he is just keeping eye on the cockroach and and all of sudden he catches it sundar pachai says you know whatever women were doing that was the reaction and whatever this waiter did was the response that he did not panic rather he was calm and quiet and observed the position of enemy and when he finds the right time he catches it my brothers and my sisters this is what we do in our every day everyday life that we react on things instead of us you know responding to to the to the issue i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala he gives you me tawfiq that we can really understand that the negatives of hastiness negative negative of rushing for things and rather we should take our time and we should have you know calmness in our personality so that we can handle things in a better way you know in madina there was one tribe who just became muslim the tribe of banu abdul qais was visiting prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as soon as they reached madina outside masjid e nabawi 
everybody from that tribe they rushed in Masjid the Nabi to meet Prophet Sallallahu from travel they were sweaty their clothes were dirty because of the long journey but they did not give themselves time to go and take shower have better clothes and perfume themselves and go to Prophet rather everybody rushed except one man and his name was Al-Ashjaj Al-Ashjaj was the man who stayed behind and he took care of all the camels he tied them he went for shower perfumed himself took care of his hair and then now he enters Masjid Nabi Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is sitting with other companions of Banu Abdul Qais and they pointed you know Prophet Sallallahu this man also belongs to our tribe but he stayed behind to take care of the camels and to take care of himself when Prophet sees him in a nice dress perfumed well kept here he asks him to sit down next to him and Prophet says to him that Allah has given you two things which Allah loves the most one is hill and other one is ana forbearance and calmness this calmness that you took your time before entering the masjid that is ana and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves these qualities my brothers and my sisters there are certain things in life that we should rush for there are things which I already told you that we should not be hasty about rather we should take our time but there are certain things in life that we should rush in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he says that you should rush for things for akhirah as Quran has mentioned you know Vasariyu ila maghfiratim mir rabbikum wa jannah you should rush for maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should rush for tawbah if, it's, if you have done a sin then you should not wait rather you should be hasty asking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have somebody's haq then returning his haq you better rush for it because you never know the life will allow you a time to go and pay his haq my brothers and my sisters the third thing which really I want to share with you and with that I will share one hadith and I will conclude and this is one of the most important point of my khutbah today the third thing that we should rush is if you have debt if you have qarz if you have somebody's loan because as you remember from the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he did not refuse to lead the prayer of a munafiq Raisul Munafiqeen he is ready to lead his prayer but he refused to lead the prayer of somebody who has qard debt loan on him there was one janaza came and Prophet Muhammad was there he asked Sahaba do you know this man and they said yes Ya Rasulullah we know him does he have any debt any loan any qarz Sahaba said yes Ya Rasulullah he has a loan of two dinar two dinar Prophet announced among Sahaba do you do you have anybody who can take his loan on himself to pay it pay it off Hazrat Abu Qadada Ta'ala Anhu was there he said Ya Rasulullah I will take care of that loan two, two dinars you know burial happened the same evening Prophet Muhammad sees Abu Khadada and asks Abu Khadada, Abu Khadada, what happened to two, those two dinars that you were supposed to pay? Abu Khadada says, Ya Rasulullah, the burial just happened. I was busy in that. I did not get time to pay those, those two dinars. The next morning, Prophet sees Abu Khadada again and he asks Abu Khadada, Abu Khadada, what happened to the loan of your brother that two dinar Abu Qadada says Ya Rasulullah I just paid it 
And Prophet Sallallahu said, Abu Qadada, now the flesh of your brother has been cooled. The flesh of your brother now has been cooled. Imagine two dinar. And look at the reaction of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he was so eager to make sure that Abu Qatada pays off those two dinars so the body of that man can be cooled down, can find peace. Wallahi, in our today's practical life, I see so many brothers that we are so heedless and careless. If I have haq of somebody, if I owe somebody something, and if I have a qard of somebody, I take my time. I'm not. I'm. I'm worried about everything else, but paying off the loan of somebody. Wallahi, this hadith. I heard the detail of it few days ago, and I was shocked. That look at the importance that we, before we depart from this dunya, that we should have given back everybody's right. From this, I will remind myself and you, brothers and my sisters. Wallahi, this should be one of our dua every day. If Allah grants you and me a peaceful death, death in which that we can have real sakina and real peace when we depart from this dunya, this is one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when we depart from this dunya, we have nobody's loan. We are ready to meet our Rabb. And we are ready to depart from this dunya with peace and our shoulders don't have burden of anybody. Allah, Akbar.